Hi, and welcome back to Jet Admin Tutorials. I'm Michael, and today I'm going to show you how to build a custom CRM using Xano. We'll go through all the steps from building a database and API group on Xano, to connecting it to Jet, to building out the app itself. Let's get started. The first thing to do is to build our database on Xano. To do this, we log into Xano and choose the instance that we want to use. Now, click on Database in the menu on the left. Here, you'll see a table that is automatically created, as well as any others that you might have added already. I want to use new data, so I'm going to go to the top right corner and choose Add Table. There are two options here, Add and Import. Add will allow me to create a totally new table from scratch, and Import is what I will choose because I have a CSV file with my data. Now I simply drag and drop my file, and here I see a preview of my data. There are two important things to do on this page. The first is to choose a primary key. Here, my primary key is ID, so I'll choose that from the drop-down menu. The second important thing to do here is to adjust your data types. For example, my priority field currently holds text data. However, these are not unique text values, these are really categories. If I click here, I can choose enum for enumerate to create categorical type data. Another thing I might do is get rid of columns that I don't need. For example, I don't need the column expected close date. So I'll click here and choose disable. Once you've made all the necessary changes, you can click upload at the bottom of the screen. Great, now we have our data on Xano. So it's time to create an API. If I click on API in the menu on the left, I'll see a default API group that is automatically created, as well as any other API groups I might already have. To create a new one, go to the upper right hand corner and choose Add API Group. Now it's time to add my API endpoint. If I go to the upper right, I can choose Add API Endpoint, and you can see that Xano already has a group of CRUD operations. I click on this. Then I choose the table that I want to create an endpoint for, and then I choose the specific operation that I need. Here, it's important to use one of these descriptions so that Jet can correctly identify the endpoint. I've included the link to this article in the description of this video. Now I click Save, and my endpoint is created. I'm going to go ahead and add all my other endpoints to this table. You are also able to use a storage on Xano to hold your files, and Jet's integration allows you to upload files to that storage directly from the app or from the app builder if you prefer. To set that up, let's add one more endpoint. I click on Add API Endpoint again, but instead of choosing CRUD operations, I click on Upload Content, and then choose Upload as Attachment. It's not necessary to have a specific description in this case. Great. Now I've got all of my API endpoints, both for my table and to upload files. Let's head on over to Jet. The first thing I need to do is to connect Xano to Jet. I can do this by hovering over the data icon in the menu on the left and then choosing add resource. I choose Xano from the list and then I copy and paste my API group base URL here. I can find that in the upper right hand corner of my Xano API group page. Once I've pasted it in, I need to choose between two different connection options, direct link or syncing. I'm gonna choose syncing because it allows me to do SQL queries, to blend data from different sources and to do other things right out of the box. Now I simply click add resource and I'm ready to start working with Xano. So let's take a look at this. Here, you can see that my data has been loaded and I also have this attachment section which will allow me to upload files to Xano. Let's start building the app. I'll go to one of my pages and I'll drag and drop a table into the app. Now I'll choose my data source. It currently says demo Google Sheets, so I'll click on that and I'll choose Xano and then my table. Let's add a filtering component. I'll drag and drop my filter in here and then I'll click bind to component and choose my table. Now I'll define what I want to do. I choose the field that I want to affect and then define what kind of filtering I want it to do. 
in this case equals because I want an exact match. Now that's all set up. So now I'll add a form component so that I can update my table. I drag and drop the form component into my app and then I choose the resource that I want it to affect. Thanks to Jet's integration with Xano, the CRUD operations are already preloaded. I'll select Update Record, and now I want to bind to component and choose my table so that I'll be able to update whatever deal I have selected. Now I simply hit Generate. Great, so now let's add some charts to visualize our data and make our app more usable. To start, I'll add a pie chart that will show me the breakdown of my deal statuses. I drag and drop the pie chart in, choose the resource that I want to connect to, choose what I want to show, and how I want it to group the data. Great, that looks good. Let's add another chart that will display priority. Let's use a bar chart. I do the same thing. I drag and drop it in again, and then I choose my resource, choose what I want to show, and choose how I want it to group the data. Okay, this is looking pretty good. I'm gonna make a few aesthetic changes, and then I'll publish the app. Now that my app is published, I can share it with my teams, my users, or anybody else I want. To do that, I simply click share and then choose one of the share options here. If you've shared your app with different people and groups, you might wanna set up visibility for your different components. For example, if I have a table that contains customer data and I only want a customer to be able to see their own data, I can do that by adding a filter. To do that, I can use an account equals filter and then identify the account using user properties. Currently, I only have myself here though. I can also do this by changing the visibility of components. I can click on a component, then choose display and change the conditional visibility of the component. One last thing I want to mention today is syncing. If I go to my Xano resource, at the top, I'll see that it says how long ago the last sync was. If I click on this, I can see a log of my syncs with Xano. To the right of this, there is a button with three dots. If I click on that, I can trigger a sync immediately by clicking sync now, and I can also adjust how often Jet will sync with Xano. Great, that's it for today. I hope this was helpful. If you have any more questions, take a look in the video description where I've included links to our documentation and also to an article about this topic. Hope to see you next time on Jet Admin Tutorials.